supervisory and regulatory policies and standards, and the coordination across, and this is important, across the various standard setting bodies, it's the principal task of the FSF. Now the FSB. Now the FSB. The IMF participates in this work, is a member of the FSB, and provides relevant inputs. The implementation of policies in the financial sector is the responsibility of national authorities who are accountable to national legislatures and governments. The IMF assesses the authorities' implementation of such policies through the financial sector assessment programs. And finally, the IMF and the FSB now will cooperate in uh, in, uh, in undertaking early warning exercises within the respective realms of competence. So that's, that's the division of tasks. Um, I think uh, I've said enough. I'm between the host bonds, but could you just briefly recap on the start of what you were mentioning? Because we were expecting it all to be on the stage properly, but um, yeah, but I mean, we were. I'm sorry, do I have to say it again? Just I mean, just unwind my... recap, because we weren't here filming. Yeah. We were told it was going to be on the stage. So if you don't, just brief sort of... Why, why don't, I mean, if you had another question, I could answer a question, so you can feel my answer to a question, rather than going back and re-saying everything. But how's this... Just a brief recap, just so we know. Could we... Distribute. What we set out I'm sorry? What we set out today for the FSB seems to... Yes, the specific the specificity lies exactly I mean in what I was saying before. It has a stronger mandate as far as coordination of standard setting bodies is concerned and it has the members of the FSB uh, will comply with a certain general obligations, namely transparency uh, and uh, the transparency of their financial systems and uh, compliance with general standards and, um, and basically having financial stability as one of their goals, policy goals. What happens? So I would see. I mean, but the the expectation is that they will comply. That's one. You know, that's one of the perhaps the greatest value added of the enlargement itself. It's the new members can draw on the experience of the old members and at the same time receive the benefits of this uh, experience and. Uh, of a greater transparency. We cannot talk about uh, binding recommendation, can we? Well, not really, no. We are still at the general principles level, and it's, it's been our experience, really, that through exchange and cooperation and discussions, things change. But you know, ultimately, that's a good question, ultimately, the responsibility of implementation lies with national authorities. It's not the FSF that can impose upon countries anything, really. Be going to have a macro stability role jointly with the IMF? Is that the role? Not really, no. The FSB has macro, will work in the macro prudential and the fin macro prudential financial stability area together with the IMF. But it doesn't have responsibilities in the macro economy stability as such. That is something specific to the IMF. Okay. Um, let, let me just, can I say, we also, just to say what we have done, because we, we talked about process, now let me talk about products. We've uh, published today four reports. One is on procyclicality, where we have a set of recommendations, uh, all aimed basically at making um, capital accumulation uh, for the banking system uh, less procyclical than it is today. So the idea being that uh, you, banks will pile up capital in good times, will draw on capital buffers in bad times. We may have a leverage ratio which would do this exactly this automatically. Um, we, we recommend to have uh, 
early losses recognition, expected losses recognition, and uh, corresponding provisioning. Um, <clears throat> and I think basically that's for procyclic, and then we do some other things like measurements of VAR across the cycle. We recommend several things, and the Basel Committee is actively working in this area. Then there's a second report on compensation. Uh, on compensation, it's basically uh, it's something that's based on on uh, basically on, on aligning. Number one pillar of the compensation principles is the alignment of of compensation with risk. And in the sense that compensation ought to be symmetric, which is uh, which hasn't been certainly been uh, like that in the past. The second pillar is that it has to do with governance. Um, it's important that boards, top management discuss, but especially boards discuss compensation, ask questions about alignment of compensation with risk, and. Um, and I think the third and most important aspect is the compensation becomes, compensation schemes become an object of banking supervision. So the supervisors will have a say in deciding if certain compensation schemes are in line with these basic principles. So this uh, to me is, is, is in a sense it goes beyond uh, the sort of the technocratic language and it's really a big, big change. You can look at the report, it's pretty short, as a matter of fact, and and, and draw other things from that. The third report is about uh, uh, crisis management, cross-border crisis management. It's a set of arrangements, really, of what to minimal arrangements that should be in place before any crisis actually happens to take place. And the fourth report is about what we have done so far, an update of all the work of the FSF, so far and how the implementation of the 77 recommendations, 76, 67, 68 recommendations contained in our last year's April report have been implemented in, in this, during this period of time. I have to go now, so I'm sorry.